Can you be happy with the happiness of others? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. According to an ancient Greek legend, a certain athlete ran well but placed second in the race. The winner was encompassed with praise and eventually a statue was erected in his honor. Envy ate away at the man who had placed second. He resented the winner and he could think of little else. Eventually he decided to destroy the statue of the winner. Night after night, he went to the statue under cover of darkness, chiseling away at the base to weaken the foundation. But one night, as he chiseled in violent anger, he went too far. The heavy marble statue teetered on its base and crashed down on the disgruntled athlete. He died beneath the weight of the marble replica of the man he had grown to hate. His own envy had destroyed him. In today's first reading, Paul appeals for unity among Christians, particularly in Philippi. Writing from his prison cell, he tells them to live their lives in Christ with the same love, united in heart. He asks them not to be selfish and not to have such inordinate pride in their achievements and excessive vanity, but to humbly regard themselves less important than others. One of the most difficult attitudes to carry is to be happy when others are happy. This is especially true when we are in a rut, when things are not going our way. Test yourself in whatever stage of life you are in right now and see if you feel envy and jealousy in these situations. Do you get envious and jealous when... A colleague in the workplace, church, or community is promoted ahead of you or is asked to lead you. Someone who you believe is not as competent as you is hired by a reputable company. A friend has gotten engaged, married, become pregnant, or just delivered a baby. Someone close to you has won an award, been recognized for a contribution, featured in social media for his achievements. In a meeting, someone suggests a brilliant idea and is lauded by others. Your friend is able to travel to places you have never been to. Different emotions accompany one's envy, anxiety, insecurity, sadness, anger, depression. Indeed, it is difficult to cheer for someone else's success and happiness if you are filled with envy and jealousy. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis, famous for his work, The Chronicles of Narnia, and a close friend of J.R.R. Tolkien, author of The Lord of the Rings and co-faculty at Oxford University, calls pride the great sin. There is one vice of which no man in the world is free, which everyone in the world loathes when he sees it in someone else. If anyone would like to acquire humility, the first step is to realize that one is proud. If you think you are not conceited, it means that you are very conceited indeed. You'll know that you're making progress in this area when you begin to think less of your own abilities and more of your imperfections. One pastor suggests some searching questions that each of us should ask. Do I love to argue too much? Do I worry whether others recognize my contributions? Am I secretly envious of others? Do I sometimes rejoice at the misfortunes of others? Am I quick to criticize those who are different from me? How much time do I spend talking about myself? Do I do more talking than listening? When we can rejoice in the success and happiness of others, it says much about our faith in a God who gives and takes, who knows our needs and wants, who provides accordingly. We are made wiser by our acceptance that we gain nothing by being envious, but we lose nothing with our affirmations that are generous. Oftentimes, it is fear that nothing will be left for us that prods us to withhold our praise of and joy for others. The envious man feels others' fortunes are his misfortunes, their profit his loss, their blessing his bane, their health his illness, their promotion his demotion, their success his failure, according to Leslie Flynn, author of The Great Church Fights. You may want to go through this ritual in the acronym GAME GAME daily to rid yourself of envy and jealousy. First, gratitude. Thank God for every single blessing you have received daily. The best time to do this is in the morning as you wake up and especially at night as you lull yourself to sleep. 
Think of the day that was and all the good things that came to you and even the bad things and the lessons they teach you. Second, answered prayers. Rejoice in knowing that your intercessory prayers for others have been answered by God. It gives you perspective that God listens, gives what you need and not necessarily what you want. If God is capable of giving gifts to others, He can do that to you as well. Third, the Mass. Going to Mass is the highest form of prayer. Find time to be in communion with others in the Lord. Pray for holiness. The Mass blesses you and cloaks you with only that which is good, preventing you from engaging in thoughts and actions that would lead to sin. And fourth, encouragement. Practice makes perfect. When you are able to give praise every day and make it a habit, it buoys up the spirit of others and makes them happy. What makes others happy will certainly make you happy, and this circle of joy is replicated many times over. Indeed, when every game is treated not as competition but as collaboration and for self-improvement, unity in the Lord is possible. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, make me contribute to unity wherever I am through the happiness that I could provide and am capable of doing for others. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.